Hey beautiful people, welcome back to Keep On Growing, where we're teaching you the best hydroponic system for beginners. So if you're just starting out with hydroponics and you don't want to get into all of the, the huge learning curve that goes with it and, and the expense, we're going to teach you the cheap and easy way to do things. Now as you can see, this is our pak choy, one of my favorite vegetables to grow, and we've grew it in this food storage container. Now if you go back, I'll link up the video. If you go back and look a couple weeks ago, we planted this out, and if you want to know how to do that, just watch that video. But I want to show you, I let this go for a couple of weeks. I was out of town and I just came home and checked it. And uh, I want to give you a little update. This can probably go another couple of weeks. But we're going to talk about a couple of important things. Uh, there's a couple of things that happened up above ground or up above, you know, where the nutrients are. And a couple of things that happened inside. Now inside we're going to talk about the algae. And we're also going to talk about the nutrient level. Now the nutrient level is very important. And there's a couple of misconceptions out there. I want to clear that up because I get questions about that all the time. And it's nothing wrong. You know, people don't know any better. So uh, they try different things. And, and I've went through the same troubles uh, myself over the past 10 years. So uh, the, there's nothing wrong with it. I just want to save you guys the trouble and explain a couple of things about it. Now, um, before we go inside, take a look at um, the algae. Let's go ahead and talk about the top. One thing that you can see is, is it looks good, you know, awesome bunch of pak choy in that. But you can see that some of these, you can see this one, how long that is. Looks like a teaspoon, right? It's got a long handle. Now, I love pak choy because of the white stem. The, it's got a crunch. When you take these and cut them up, you drop them in your hot soup, the leaves wilt, and then the stems stay a little crunchy, adds a little nut texture to it. So I really like the crunchy stem, so I like a big, thick, crunchy stem. And this one didn't do it. Now, the reason why that happened is because I take things to the extreme and I wanted to show you guys how to do a set it and forget it system. So this right here, we planted it out. I set it, I put this guard on it, you know, the next day, but I haven't done anything else to it. So this has been sitting here a couple of weeks. We're gonna see how much nutrients it used, what algae's in it. But the other problem was, was that I set the lights about 12 inches above it and just left it there. Now what happened was these plants were growing up trying to get to that light even though it was only 12 inches away. See the sun's a powerful thing out there. It might not seem like it but the sun is a powerful thing and lights have a hard time um, imitating that. So you got to get the lights close to your plant. It depends on the lights that you have you know unless you're using like huge like halogen bulbs and that, that, that throw off a lot of heat but with the LEDs uh, you have to get them kind of close. And what I would have done if I was staying home and I wanted to show you guys how to take care of your plants step by step, you could have put your microgreens in there and set your lights out a couple of inches above it. And as they start to grow, just kind of move up with it a little. This grew this far like in two weeks. So it, you won't have to sit here. It's not like every day you have to come out and move your light, right? But you start it low and then just move it up. Me, I wanted to just set it, hit the road, come back. So I set it up, you know, about this tall. And as a result, when they were small, they started growing really tall at first, and they're starting to fill out a little. And I'm going to keep them under lights. They might grow a little thicker, but I don't think they're going to do very much, you know, before this thing starts to bolt. You know, it's already probably getting to that point. So um, if you can stay home and adjust your lights when you're growing these from microgreens, then uh, you'll do much better. Now, if you bought these from a uh, nursery, and they were already transplants and they were already yay big you know you can set your lights let them grow right but we grew them for microgreens they were you know only like that tall when we first put them in there all right another problem with the top you can see there's like a little something's chewed on it had a little bug problem uh, i came home and i was excited i came in the lights were already off i turned the lights on and got my camera started filming and it looked like a big beetle in there and i had been real vigilant about moths because you know i told you if you get little holes flip over the leaves check for little caterpillars and this unfortunately is in my garage it's not insulated it's got a cheap garage door one like you have on a garden um greenhouse it's not really one of those heavy duty garage doors bugs can get in 
and uh, I was real vigilant about the moths when I go out at night and make sure there was none in here, try to catch them, take them out. Uh, when I came in and zoomed in on that beetle, it was actually a roach. And that sounds a little disgusting or whatever to some people, but I live in Florida and it's hard to live in Florida and not see any roaches. So they're all over outside and, and people are constantly, you know, having a battle with them. But um, if you're growing outdoors, everything crawls on this, right? Besides like the pretty insects like your butterflies and um, um, praying mantis and la ladybugs and everything. You also have all the, the bad bugs and all the, the creepies, you know, are, are crawling on it too. So if you got roaches outdoors, they're going to be crawling on your plants too. So nothing really wrong with this. You can take it and just wash the leaves off. They'll be just fine. Um, you can see I saved it. They, they didn't get to everything, you know, ate a couple of leaves on here. Um, but there is a little pest problem. So I'll ask my wife, she might want me to just start over and maybe take care of the bug problem in here. Maybe put down some roach traps or something and, and roach bait and take care of that. But that's the beauty of the system, right? Is that if you hit a problem, which, you know, I've been doing this for like 10 years, and this is the first time I've caught a roach eating my bok choy, right? I've been doing it 10 years, so you people who are out there and you just start out and you hit a little bump and something doesn't work right, don't give up. Don't just, the, for the first time something fails, because sooner or later you're gonna get the hang of it. And, and even though you do get the hang of it, it's always a learning experience and I'm always finding something different. But after you get the basics and you're growing stuff like this, it's just fun. You get addicted to it and those little problems, you know, they're just little problems that you need to solve and, and you have fun with it. Now, um, so uh, if we've got microgreens growing already, some more pak, pak choy microgreens, we can take these and actually trash them if we want, toss them in the compost, change our nutrient solution and put those microgreens back in. And, and when did we plant this out? It was a couple of weeks ago, right? The last video. Within a couple of weeks, we'll have pak choy again. Now, if you're growing outside in a traditional garden, uh, especially like now during the dead of summer, right? If something happens and you till it under, you're like, it's too hot to germinate outside. It's too hot to grow. You know, we'll just till it under and let the ground sit and we'll wait for fall. With this system, you start all over and within a couple of weeks, you're going to have you, you another crop. So that's, that's what I love about this system. Now, let's take a look at the inside really quick, okay? Uh, like I said, this is just the insulation you get from your home improvement store. It's like the bubble wrap with little metal foil on both sides. And I just took a couple strips and just went on over and put it together with some tape, a little Gorilla tape. Now, this right here, see how easy that is? You can be a little more diligent. You can paint the containers if you want. You can block out all the light, but I just wanted to do it just kind of makeshift so that, you know, some people out there, like I said, if, if you just want to give it a try, you don't want to spend a whole lot of time prepping and everything, you know, you get excited and you just want to throw a plane in and grow it. So I just wrap this around. And like I said, if you just do that, things are going to be just fine. And if you want to do more, then you can grow a better crop, right? So taking it to the extreme, this is what we did. And if you can see in here, we'll see the nutrient level. We're going to talk about that, but you can also see right here some algae, right? And I'll take you inside and take a look. But there's some algae growing in there. And look at the plants up here. They're awesome, right? Now let's take a quick look inside. We'll see how much algae there is. Before we look at the algae, let's look at the root system. Isn't that great? Look at all those white roots. Everything's fine. You know, the algae hasn't got on them yet. But I'm sure, you know, sooner or later, you know, they will. But, you know, these guys are almost ready to harvest. So let's take a quick little look right here you see the white roots right see right here in this area up here all the little cottony fuzzy looking stuff if the camera can pick that up that's the air roots right and that's the beauty of the cracky system even though we have an air stone in here it's aerating the water this little area that's left up in here it grows a lot of air roots and it sucks oxygen out of the air you know this is trying to pull oxygen out of the water but those white thick roots are pulling up water nutrients and oxygen but those air roots in there which are usually in the soil right your soil is not if it's compact you can't grow stuff in, in real hard compacted soil right so if your soil is is uh, aerated 
those little air roots grow out and absorbs oxygen and that's what's happening right in here in this little section so the um, nutrient level here what we we're going to talk about has to do with all of that um, air roots too but here's the problem if you're not aerating right that this would be even more of a problem so if we're doing the cracking system let's pretend we didn't have the aeration or the bubble bubbler on here right now I've told you guys that I keep everything if you watch for any length of time I keep it between half and three quarters there's a lot of people new to this channel in fact over half of the viewers on every video are new people that have never seen this before so if you hear me say this over and over again it's because it's, it's a really important point and and we really need to hammer it into people is that you don't want to drown your air roots right at the very beginning we fill this completely to the top and as the water level drops it starts developing these air roots now I've said to keep it between half and three quarters I went on the road that's why it's right down here as your plants mature they start soaking up the nutrients a whole lot faster so if you're staying at home and you're watching your plants when it gets down to three quarters that's where you want to maintain that level so if a few days it drops a little bit go ahead and refill a little just keep it maintained in there and that's why the float valves work really well and if you you want to buy a float valve they've got stuff that you can get and put in it's a little tough to put it on a container like this but dr cracky on his channel the kind approaches he's got like homemade float valves that he's made out of like tupperware and that so go check that out but if you can just come in here every couple of days and just maintain that level, your plants will love you. If you let it drop like this, right, or go down even further, because somebody said that their plants had used almost all their nutrients, then they took this and cleaned it out and refilled it, and their plants are all suffering, or most of their plants. Well, what happens is your plants, as this drops, they're adapting. They adapt every day, every hour, every minute when, when different things are happening in their environment. They're growing and it's slowly, but they're kind of adapting to this new environment. And as that goes down, it grows more air roots and it's learning, you know, what's going on in here. And if it likes what's going on, you get like plants like this. And then if you take it and fill it all the way back up, you've totally changed that environment. And if you take this where there's some algae growing in there, right? If you take that and, and just change everything and, and clean it out and put brand new nutrients in, which sounds good to us, like, you know, it's, it's like we first start or like a clean glass of water, right? That's what we're tempted to do is to get rid of this, which this is a little ecosystem. You know, there's stuff growing in there. So this is a little ecosystem that started. And when that goes down really low, this plant's like adapting to everything. And if you take it and get rid of all of that, clean this out, and put brand new nu nutrients in, and you drown the roots, you've totally changed that ecosystem. This plant goes into shock. So that's what happens a lot of time, and I, I hear these stories all the time. People are like, you know, I changed it out and put fresh nutrients in, my plant died, you know, what happened? And it's because you're taking this and you're changing it. It's just like you, if you, you slowly adapt to like some certain environment, and that you, you, it takes a long while, and then all of a sudden you go from extreme cold to extreme hot that's what's happening to the plant is that that you're totally changing it and it just doesn't know what to do and it just dies so at least you know that's my opinion so the best thing you can do for your plants if you're going to grow fast grown leafy greens is to keep it between half and three quarters you know if you can maintain that just keep maintaining that your plant's going to get used to it it's going to be the, the more you can keep this consistent, the better your plants are going to love it. Now, I forgot to show you the algae in here when we had it open because we started talking about the nutrient level. But that nutrient level is like really important. Like I said, I want, I want to drill that in and have everybody understand that, okay? Now, the algae, you know, will pop in here. You can see, like I said, we've got white roots, but we also have some algae here. And I'll bring you in for a close-up. You can look. There's some around the bottom because the bottom wasn't covered. But even though we have this much algae starting to grow in here, we still have, you know, leafy greens like this. So if you're growing something like uh, fast growing leafy greens, this is what I want everybody to get started on. If you're new, that's why this is for beginners. Do something that's going to be easy, set it and forget it. You get to doing it, you get addicted. Some people get really excited and the first thing they jump into, they start looking at all these videos, right? They spend hours and days looking at all these videos, getting all these different conflicting, different opinions. And then they see somebody growing a watermelon or, or tomatoes. And the first thing they want to do is stick a tomato plant in. 
and they haven't got the basics down. That's what our online course is about, is teaching people A, B, C, one, two, three. It's you putting on your training wheels. You know, if you take kindergarten kids, you take and start trying to teach them calculus, they're gonna be real confused if they don't know what addition and subtraction and multiplication division is, right? So what we're teaching is the basics. You gotta have these basics down, and that's what we teach in the, the online course. And some people are a little confused. Uh, it's not a master class. It's not like hundreds of dollars. You know, this is under 50 bucks. Uh, most of you have got it for like $10. And it's just teaching you all of the basics so that you can go out tomorrow and start growing food like this. So I want everybody in the world to learn how to grow some of their own food. And it all starts with the basics. And that's what we're doing here. So you guys get out there. Keep spreading the word like you do. It's, we're going to teach the world how to feed itself, and it all starts with you, and I love you guys for it. So get out there, grow some of your own food, tell all your friends about it. We want everyone to learn how to do this. As always, lift and inspire, keep on growing, be the change. We'll catch you all next time. <music>